Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the odd numbered questions um, for this particular section. So we start off with some proofs. So let's see. So let's write out our statements. Oops. And our reasons. Okay, so we always start off typically with one of our givens. I'm actually going to probably start with my two givens, and I don't care if you guys um, write both of them together or if you write them separate. I wrote them separate just because I like to see um, what I'm doing and justify every single step, even though I could write them, I guess, in one line. Um, okay, so, and when I do my proof, sometimes I don't think about, like, um, writing out all my reasons at the at the exact moment that I'm writing my statement. Sometimes I like to just kind of go with the flow with how I'm trying to prove something and then go back and be like, okay, let me write it down. Because, you know, you can lose your train of thought, you know, with, with your proving if you're writing um, your reasons with your statement sometimes. So... And it kind of depends. Like, sometimes you don't. Like, you get better at proving, and then you can just write them all in one straight line, and that's fine. But um, when you're first starting out, sometimes it gets, you know, you, you're like, oh, man, I lost my train of thought. Okay. So I have 12 is congruent to 8. So that was given. What am I trying to prove? I'm trying to prove. So always think about what you're trying to go for. I'm trying to prove that uh, J and K are equal or parallel to each other. So then that way... Somehow along the way, if that's par if those are parallel, then I have to either have to use this transversal or this transversal in order to um make them parallel by using angles that are congruent. So if I can find that are, you know, with a with one of the transversals that one of the angle one of the pairs of angles are congruent, then I can prove with the converse that they are uh, parallel. So, I mean, there's a couple of ways that you could do it because, you know, um, you can do four, um, eight and two are congruent, um, with, let's see, L and N are parallel. So I could have done, um, uh, four and eight are congruent because they're corresponding angles. So that's the one thing that's kind of weird about geometry. Sometimes um, what ends up happening is you end up um, being able to write the proof different ways. So it all depends on how you um, do things. I can use, um, I always, my go-to is like altered interior angles. I don't know why, um, but uh, when I first started out proving that, that's always been my go my go-to. Anytime I can find altered interior angles, I will probably use it. But that's just a per personal preference. Your personal preference might be corresponding angles, and that's totally fine. Um, the one thing I probably would not do is I wouldn't use same side interior. Um, and the reason why we I wouldn't use same side interior is because I'm not trying to prove that something's equal to 180. I'm actually trying to prove angles are congruent. Um, instead. So I would have used um, alternate exterior, corresponding, or alternate interior. Okay, so I use alternate interior. So that means that angle 2 is congruent to angle 8. And then I said that angle 2 was congruent to angle 12 because I can combine these two statements together. And if 2 and 12 are... Um, congruent they are outside um j and k so this is um the alternate exterior angle theorem so this is given this was also given this was alternate interior angles um this was transitive. Transitive is if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A and C are the same thing. So um, it's a little bit different than substitution. Um, I use transitive a lot when it comes to congruency. Whereas substitution Substitution is like I've taken an equation and substituted it in for 
an angle measurement. Okay, so parallel here. So converse to the alternate exterior angle theorem. Okay, so I apologize if you can hear my phone buzzing. Um, first thing in the morning, I get all my like, hey, Starbucks is having a whatever sale or, you know, all my little sale apps uh go off so okay so now I'm gonna write a proof I only have one given one given statement so we'll start off there and then two let's see um so I'm trying to prove L and M are parallel so three and six Add up to 180. Oops, there goes my alarm. Um, let's see. So. Five. And six. Add up to equal 180 because it's a linear pair. So then... Oh, I didn't even write statements and reasons. Okay. So then that means the measure of angle 3 plus measure of angle 6 is equal to measure of angle 5 plus measure of angle 6. So this is where substitution comes in because I took my 180 and I um, substituted one of the equations for 180 degrees. So... Four, um, I can subtract measure of angle six from each other. And if three and five are equal in measurement, then they are congruent. And then we can say L is parallel to M. Okay, so here this is given. Oops, my iPad must be a little smudgy this morning not had a chance to clean it so this is given um this is linear pair this is substitution subtraction property um definition of congruency and then six, let's see. So I proved three, so uh, converse to the alternate interior angle. Okay, so now we're gonna skip four. Four is a little odd. Okay, let's see. The only reason why four is a little odd is because I'm like, why why are there three parts to it? So technically this is an A and a B and a C. Okay. Alright, so five is proving converse to the corresponding angle theorem. And then seven is um, y is equal to 65. No, just kidding. I wasn't even reading it correctly. Um, let's see. Same side, um, interior. So y plus 65 is equal to 180. So y is equal to 115. Uh, same side, interior. I didn't ask you for the justification, but I just wanted you to know. Okay, so the 9, let's see. So 2x plus 5x plus 40 is equal to 180. So 7x plus 40 is 180. So 7x is equal to 140. So x is equal to 20. Okay. 11, 
um, A is parallel to B, and this is, let's see, same side interior. And then 13, um, 1 and 3 are congruent, so that makes A parallel to B. And this is corresponding angles theorem. And then 15, 2, and 10. Um, that is also corresponding angles theorem, but we're switching um, parallel lines. So now it's L is parallel to M. And then 17 is not enough info. Because when I look, uh, here's 11 and 7. And one's on the outside and one's on the inside, but they're like opposite, so like a weird situation. Okay, and then 19, L is parallel to M. And this is alternate interior angle theorem. Because here's 5 and 10 up here. So they're alternate. Okay. All right, and that's it for this uh, problem set.